Many people are missing out on really cool free software tools just because they are command line based instead of having a graphic user interface. But in this video, you'll see it's not so complicated and some of the most useful tools are like this, yet still easy to use. And I think you'll be surprised at how cool some of these are. Oh, and of course, all of these are free and most are open source too. So let's get into it. All right, so I want to start with this first one because it will make our lives easier for all the rest actually. The tool is called Cheat. And the idea is you create little cheat sheets to remember how to use other command line tools. For example, say you want to convert a video with FFmpeg, but can't remember how. You can just type cheat FFmpeg and it will show a list of examples to help remind you. And you can customize this by editing a corresponding text file. The default list for FFmpeg is pretty complicated, so what you saw was my own list. There's actually a big collection of community contributed cheat sheets so you'll have the option to download when you first run it. Also, you can filter for commands that mention a phrase, for example, by doing cheat FFmpeg s convert and it only shows ones that say convert. I also made a batch script, which I can link to, that makes it so I don't even need to use the dash s, it builds the command for me. So I can call that c.bat, and then can just call c fmpeg convert, and that works too. Cheats also has a whole tagging feature, but I'm not gonna get into that. To add your own cheat sheets, you just go into the personal folder in the cheat sheets directory and create a file with no extension with the name you want to use and just add text however you want it to appear. I might even create some cheat sheets for some of the programs I mentioned in this video. So if I do, I'll put the links to those in the description as well. Now, speaking of really cool things, let me tell you about a brand new set of products from today's sponsor, Ugreen, and their upcoming line of network attached storage devices, the Ugreen NAS Sync series. For example, here I have the Ugreen NAS Sync DXP4800 Plus, which sports four SATA drive bays and two NVMe drive bays, allowing a maximum storage capacity of up to 96 terabytes. This one is also equipped with both 10 gigabit and 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports and can reach transfer speeds up to 1,250 megabytes per second when using fast enough storage like the pre-installed 128 gigabyte SSD. And with its 12th gen five core Intel Pentium Gold processor, it has no problem with multitasking and fast data processing for more responsive operations. With Ugreen NAS storage, it's like having your own private cloud on your local trusted network. So no worries worrying about cloud service companies spying or them having some data breach. And with the built-in security manager app, it protects your data in real time and does scheduled scans to prevent malware intrusions. And for speed, you can see here how much faster I can transfer files with my 10 gigabit local connection to the NAS compared to my gigabit internet plan to some cloud service. Oh, and don't just think of it as only a big storage drive. The operating system, UGOS Pro, allows a huge variety of functionality through the all-inclusive app center, such as file syncing, and backup with devices, photo, video, and music with content searching, and a bunch of other apps. There's even an AI smart assistant that runs completely locally and can intelligently identify photos based on places, faces, and text. And again, the AI model is all run locally without connecting to the internet. So no personal data is sent anywhere. So if you want your own private cloud storage solution with the Ugreen NAS Sync series, check out the link in the description where you'll get a whopping 40% off the regular price for a limited time. Definitely check it out. And with all that being said, let's continue. Okay, so now we can move on to cool tool number two, which is YTDLP, short for YouTube Download Plus. Like the name suggests, it lets you download videos from YouTube, but also a whole bunch of other sites as well. Now, normally the commands for this can be cumbersome, but fortunately for you all, I created yet another script for making it way easier. This one happens to use Windows PowerShell. When you run it, you just paste in the URL of the video and it outputs all the possible video and audio qualities and then asks you how you want to download it. For the most part, you'll just want to choose either one or two, and then it will start the download and put it in a folder called outputs. It also supports playlists and allows you to change what other parameters you want to use with YouTube Download Plus, but that's more advanced. Now keep in mind, YTDLP has way more features than what my script supports. Mine is just to make it easier for basic use, but you can look up on the GitHub repo for all the other options if you want to get fancy, and there is a lot. All right, next up we have an extremely powerful tool called Image Magic that lets you do pretty much anything imaginable in regards to image files. Yes, of course, you can do the basics of converting from one file type to another, like by doing magic input.jpg output.png, or you can resize by adding the parameter dash resize 50%, for example. But would you believe that there are over 300 total command line options and they can get super advanced. 
For example, don't you just hate it when you find yourself needing to set the drawing transformation matrix on an image? And I don't know about you, but it seems like every day I need to apply a Kuwahara radius to one of my photos. Well, of course, Image Magic can do that and more. Image Magic includes several separate executables, but you mostly just need magic.exe. Previously, specific operations required dedicated commands like convert, but now you can just do magic input.jpg output.png, for example. For certain functions, direct tools like identify.exe can still be used, like identify input.jpg or equivalently through magic.exe, magic identify input.jpg. This simplifies the process, though awareness of both methods is beneficial if you see examples with the older methods. I could spend hours on all the possible uses, but here are some common things I use it for. If I need to make a JPEG file smaller, I can use the quality parameter, which goes from zero to 100, and try lowering it as much as I can while making sure that the visual quality doesn't drop too much. You can also check to see what quality a JPEG file was saved at by doing magic identify dash verbose on an image, then looking at the quality value. This also shows you a whole bunch of other info that you probably don't need, but it's there. Next up is another extremely powerful tool that you probably have heard of, which is FFmpeg, which is extremely popular and used by a ton of common software behind the scenes. To put it simply, FFmpeg lets you do all sorts of stuff to multimedia files like video and audio. This includes converting video and audio formats, extracting or attaching audio tracks to a video, applying effects like pitch shifting to audio tracks, and really anything else you can think of. That really doesn't even scratch the surface. Again, because it can do so much, that means there's a ton of commands, so you'll often find yourself Googling stuff like FFmpeg how to convert stereo to mono, but because it's so popular, it's usually easy to find instructions. And funnily enough, there's actually an online tool called FFmpeg Commander, which has a GU UI where you can specify a bunch of stuff you might want to do to some files with FFmpeg and it will give you a command you need to use for that. So that can come in handy. On to number five, we have a useful tool by Microsoft for looking up error messages called error.exe. If you've ever gotten a weird error code in Windows with no description, this can help. I actually made a whole video about this before that goes into way more detail, but basically you just run the exe with the error code and it spits out a bunch of info about it. Now hold on because yes, this looks like a mess, but what do you know, I also made a batch script to improve this too. You just run the batch file instead using the same error code. If you haven't seen my other video, this might not look any less confusing, but if you don't have time for that, you can just look through these possible descriptions and see if any of them might be a clue to the problem. Next up, number six, is a program called Exif Tool, which gets its name from Exif Data, a type of metadata. This lets you view and change the metadata on a whole bunch of different file types, and not just image files, which are normally associated with Exif Data. The full list of file types it can handle metadata for is huge, even including stuff like EXEs, Word documents, zip files, and a ton more. And actually, there are various GUIs people have made that work with Exif Tool, which are linked from the official website. Some are more general purpose like Exif Tool GUI v6, but others are GUIs for more specific purposes that just use a certain feature of Exif Tool. Anyway, for the average person, Exif Tool has a few practical uses, such as removing all metadata that isn't absolutely necessary, which can be done with this command. Or you can manipulate metadata tags on different file types if you need to. You might not need to do this very often, but it's very handy when you do. All right, for number seven, we have a tool called Pandoc, which is able to convert between basically any kind of document file type. I don't mean just Word documents and PDFs, but also other data types like JSON files, ebook files, and well, you can see the entire list for yourself. And of course, it can do a lot more than what it just seems on the surface. The documentation is miles long because it supports a bunch of different options for each file type, some of which are unique to that file type. Pandoc can be installed, but I prefer the portable version, which you can get from the GitHub releases page. Then just look for the Windows zip file option and you can extract and run it from anywhere. Next up, numbers eight and nine are both sort of related, both having to do with PDF files. And those are PDF CPU and XPDF tools. For PDF CPU, this lets you manipulate PDFs in all sorts of useful ways. For example, you can use it to extract all images or attachments from a PDF, as well as stuff like merging or splitting PDFs, adding a watermark to a PDF, and a bunch more. You can look at the full list yourself. 
But I think one of the coolest abilities is for when you come across some PDF that you want to print or edit, but you can't because it has some dumb permission restrictions and it stops you. Well, with one use of the decrypt command, you can just remove that protection without even knowing the password. To be clear though, there are two types of PDF protections. One is the kind that requires a password to even open and see the file, and unfortunately you can't remove that because that's legitimately encrypted. But for the kind that just restricts you from editing and printing, that's just a paper tiger. And even when you go to save a file like that, Adobe Acrobat will warn you that other software might not respect these restrictions at all. So that kind you can remove. Another major caveat, apparently there's a new PDF standard called PDF 2.0, which uses a different encoding scheme for protections that PDF CPU doesn't support yet. So if you try to remove a password on a more recent PDF, it might say that it doesn't support PDF 2.0 encryption. They are adding more support for PDF 2.0 features over time though. So I'm sure that it will be able to eventually. In the meantime, if all you need to do is print a protected PDF though, you could use something like Sumatra PDF Reader, which I actually use myself, and that doesn't seem to care about restrictions, at least for printing. As for the XPDF tools, this is a set of a bunch of different tools, each with a specific purpose which their names describe. Several of them are for converting PDFs into something else, like PDF to HTML, PDF to text, PDF to PNG, as well as these other less common formats. PDF info shows you info about the PDF, no surprise. PDF images lets you extract all the images from the PDF. PDF detach extracts attachments and PDF fonts extracts fonts. And of course, for each of these, you have several options. Like if you want to only extract certain pages, that sort of thing. To download these, you go to the download page for a program called XPDF Reader, but they have a separate download for the XPDF command line tools, which are these ones that I showed. All right, we still got a couple more and we're up to number 10, which is a tool called Tokai. This one is simple but cool, and it lets you generate statistics about source code you've written or just have. So if I run it on my spammer purge app directory, I can see that there are about 6,800 lines of actual code, almost 900 comment lines, and it also breaks it down by language too. There's also other options for how to format the output and gives you control over how it counts everything too. So just a neat little tool. Okay, finally at number 11, we have an interesting tool called Hyperfine, which is for benchmarking the speed of other command line tools. So say I want to see how long it takes to run error.exe as an example. I do Hyperfine and then put in whatever command you'd normally use to run the other tool, like the path to it and any parameters, then hit enter. It will run a whole bunch of times and then spit out the results, in this case saying it averaged out at around 20 milliseconds, as well as how many runs it did. I'm not sure I can think of when I'd use this beyond curiosity, but it might be helpful if you want to optimize some other tool that you use often that takes up a lot of time by trying different settings or something. At least it's cool to know about. And that's about it. I'd be curious which of these is your favorite and how many of these you already knew about. And of course, if I missed any really good ones, let me know down in the comments and check down there in case someone left a good suggestion. Thanks again to Ugreen for sponsoring. Definitely check out the new Ugreen NAS Sync series through the link in the description where you can get up to 40% off for a limited time. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big giant thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And if you wanna keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is where I talked about a whole bunch of cool portable free programs. Everyone loves those. I'll put that link right there you can click on. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.